Welcome to the MLM Solution Podcast Show, where you'll learn the facts and hear the truth about the network marketing industry. Here's your host, Rob Rob Cootie. Cootie. Hello, Miss Marie. How are you today? How are you? I am doing well, Rob. Good morning to you. Good morning. It's good to see that you made your trip safely. Back home safe and sound, back in the toasty state of Utah. Yeah. (laughs) How far of a drive is that where you were yesterday to home? Uh, It was about 10 and a half hours. So, man, I knew it was a long way. I've been to that part of the country. And when you told me where you were versus where you were going, but I had no idea it was 10 hours. Woohoo. Man, (laughs) I tell you what, you better like the person you're in the car with. (laughs) <laughs> well, I, I was alone, so yes, yes, I did. <laughs> well, that counts there, too. <laughs> Even more so, you better like the person that's in the car with you. <laughs> oh, boy, that's, that's a, a great, long drive. It's a great time. It allows me to catch up on some audio books I've been waiting to read and yeah. listen to a little music. I, I, I just, I love driving, so not a problem. Well, I do too. I do the same thing. I don't do the audio books. They'll put me to sleep. I'll definitely do the music. But you know what? If I'm on a 10-hour trip, and I speak from the experience, if I'm on a 10-hour trip, to be honest with you, I have probably three hours of music, and the rest of the time is total quiet. I, I just enjoy thinking, you know? So it really is a I won't like I'm not stressed out every day. Of course, I have stress in my life. You know, I got to get things done. And the closer you get to the deadline, the more stress you have. You know, everybody has that kind of stuff. But, uh, you know, I keep my stress that helps me to relax. You know, I'm just like, uh, okay. And I normally like if I got to be someplace on the Saturday, I'll leave today. (laughs) You know what I'm saying? (laughs) Because I have the money and the time to go, you know? Yeah, uh, there you go. We used to. I, I, we're big college sports fans around here, and I hang out with some of the ex-football uh, and basketball players, and that's not important. These guys played years ago, okay? <clears throat> but the point is, is that we'll all go to games together, and uh, they'll tell me, you said, man, I love going with you because you don't wait till the last minute, man. You got everything taken care of, and all we got to do is give you the money, and we just get in the car, and you drive, and we get there in plenty of time. When we get there, we're relaxed. You know, we get there a day before, we're able to go out and walk around, eat, and we relax. We're not just driving up a half hour before the game, you know, or an hour before the game, and we're stressed out. We're throwing stuff in a room and trying to find something to eat. He said, man, this is the way to travel. The point being is if I, I have to go somewhere, <laughs> I'm getting there early. <laughs> well, I tell you what, my life got a whole lot less stressful when I stopped having to do a commute to an actual J-O-B. Oh, my gosh, so. yes. Ooh, <laughs> girl, oh. <laughs> yeah, and I'm, I'm like you. I, I like to leave myself plenty of time. My personal theory has always been five minutes early is on time, on time's late, and late is unacceptable. So, Well, you learn that in the military. If you're not 15 minutes before, they consider you late, and they let you know about it. <laughs> so oh, yeah. I get that completely. And, you know, speaking of the, the job, it's funny you say that because one of my last assignments uh, was in L.A. I was stationed in L.A. I won't get into what base – and what I did. But the point is, is that I was stationed there and I, I loved it. You know, I, I was in California for eight years and loved it. It was back when California was good, not the total liberal crap mess it is now. But the point is, is that you have a situation where uh, even when it was good, I would find myself grinding my teeth and I get real tight right here. And I would have to take my fingers and do that. And this is in traffic. You know why? Anybody that knows me, I got investigated when I was in the military because I owned nice things. They thought I was selling drugs. <laughs> they thought there was no way. But guys, I I took my money and I invested my money and I was in real estate, blah, blah, blah. And especially when I went through the divorce because I gave my, my wife, the girls decided to go with the wife, which was fine. Uh, I was tickled either way. I love my kids to death. My kids are way above me and, and as far as importance, love them to death. But when the divorce happened in Texas, and I was stationed at that time in Dallas, Fort Worth, which I loved as well, high crime there, big time. Number four in the nation, year in and year out in crime. 
it was crazy. I remember when carjacking, when they would they would hit your car, they drive up and bump into your car, and you thought, oh gosh, and you pull over, they would hold you up and take your car. Well, I had a really when I got a divorce, I was always about the family. This is not about me, but I was always about the family. So I never owned anything fancy as far as sports cars. And I love, like most men, I love uh, sports cars. So and there's not a such thing as a cheap sports car, okay? So even in an older one. So anyway, the thing is, is that uh, when we got a divorce and I made sure the family, we sold everything, I spilled everything down in the middle uh, as far as cash and material things, but no, not material things. I gave them everything. The only thing I left with was my new sports car, the clothes on my bike, and that was it. And, you know, money in the bank. And that was it because I wanted my children, since they decided to go with their mother, they, for whatever reason, they didn't want to go to California. And I don't know, <laughs> but it worked out. But the thing is, they came back to, to where I grew up. And uh, I wanted the wife, the, the former wife, to have a washer and dryer, to have furniture, to have beds. I didn't need all that stuff. I wasn't going to be a butt head. It was really, if you want to even say, it was a nice divorce. And I don't even know if that's, but in other words, we didn't chew each other's heads off. We were very, very mature about it and we made things work, right? But the important thing is to make sure my children had what they needed, right? So I go to California and uh, they tried to carjack me in Fort Worth one day. They came up and tried to hit the car and I took off. So that was the beginning. You know, I'm like, oh, man, you know, you, you work hard to have nice things. You got this really nice sports car. It never dawned on me that people would walk up to you with a gun at a stoplight and point the gun at you and say, get out. <laughs> so it took away from having a nice car. You get the point, right? Yep. So then I go to California and it's even worse. And here I'm driving this, you know, really expensive car. And uh, uh, so then I get investigated by the military because they said to themselves, how can this guy afford? He's going, he's going through a divorce. How can he afford to have this kind of car? And uh, so that was, there was another headache. And then I found myself doing this because I was being bombarded. You know, the heavy traffic, you know how it is. If you got like my ex fiance who lived in uh, Hemet, uh, she worked in, I forget the name of, uh, it doesn't matter, but her job was only 13 miles away. She got up every day at two in the morning to get ready by to leave by four and had to be worked by six. And it was only 13 miles. <laughs> so <laughs> if that gives you any kind of indication of the traffic that you encountered. And so I lived just one county away. I only lived like eight or nine miles away. I would have to get up and leave at 430 in the morning to get to work by seven. OK, every day. And I finally moved down to where closer to the base. But I was actually two bases were like this close to each other. OK, they were only like 10 or 15 miles away. Well, they closed one of them. And so I was still active at the other one. And they ended up closing that one, too. But anyway, the point is, is that here I am driving around trying to enjoy the beautiful weather California has to offer. You have this car that you worked so hard to have. And all of a sudden you find yourself grinding your teeth. Hmm. Because you're going to a stressful job as it is in the military, and you got this stress from, am I going to be carjacked today? You know, is somebody going to steal my car? Which ended up happening. My car was stolen. <laughs> I mean, and I said, you know what? I'm done with this California shit. <laughs> it's over with. I'm out of here. <laughs> and so guess what? I went to a, I went to North to, I went to North Dakota of all places. <laughs> <laughs> you can't you can't get much more. Can't get much more opposite from California than that. <laughs> I know it. <laughs> so when you said job, the stress of a job, oh my gosh, boy, did that bring back that story? And the point, the whole reason I told you that it's not about the car, it's about the tension the car uh, attract, you know, brought to me and the additional stress. I already had job stress. I didn't need that too, you know? So I learned a valuable lesson there, uh, which they egged my car. People were so jealous. They keyed the car. Uh, I had to, I basically I had to stop driving it because people were so jealous of what you had. Um, so nowadays I drive, my brother and I, we drive our cars at night. We don't take it. Isn't it, isn't it sad? I mean, we keep them hidden. We don't even have them at the houses. We keep them hidden in other locations, believe it or not. And, um, so we have additional storage cost 
on top of the insurance costs, we don't even get a chance to drive them every day because of the of these kind of issues. And uh, here in Louisville, uh, we have a lot of carjackings going on. Um, we are moving. <laughs> We're moving out to where lost dogs don't go. <laughs> <laughs> so anyway, uh, she brings up stress, guys. Well, I'm going to tell you, the one thing, and that's a good point, and that's a great segue. Guys, if you have the money, you have the lifestyle. I mean, look, we're doing a podcast in the middle of the day. It's 11 a.m., <laughs> which we need to we get for 10 minutes into the show. But anyway. Sometimes we're going to have these kind of conversations. But anyway, you know what? We both have our hair. She's not gray. I'm getting there. <laughs> the point is, is that we have very low stress. <laughs> we're not all wrinkled up. <laughs> we are kind of, I think, I think we both could say we have a very nice life, despite what's going on in the world. Well, I absolutely cannot complain. <laughs> yes, I agree. I'm very happy with where I am, and that's for sure. And uh, yes, it can be better. And uh, I only mean that in certain other ways, not monetarily, <laughs> not stress wise. But I mean, uh, I wish the world was in a better shape right now. It could be better, right? Absolutely. So, yes. So we're not going to go there because we're not about that show. Um, we may do that a show about politics and world events down the road. We'll see. But anyway. The point is that uh, we're here because we're going to be talking about an important subject, and here's the subject, and it is this, uh, how to restart your business effectively and correctly. What you're going to learn, what we're saying is and what you're going to learn in this episode, you're going to learn how if you did not get off to a good start and you're going to do a 90-day mini blast and you say, oh my gosh, I didn't take the right steps, I left steps out, I really screwed this up, what do I do now? We're going to cover that, okay? And you need to take a step back. You need to restart. You need to hit that great restart button. Remember the start button? What was that show? Uh, Staples, they had the start button. Uh, is that what it was? Easy button. Is easy the button. Easy there button. it is. <laughs> you know what? We need to get one of those for the show. <laughs> Ding. Because <laughs> we have the red flag. And I have the gavel. I haven't used the gavel yet. <laughs> well, bam, wrong. <laughs> so the point is, is that... Um, yeah, we need to have a great reset button. I'll have to look and see if I can get one. Um, but anyway, the point is, is that we have a situation where we're going to be talking about, because that's going to happen. If you're new and your confidence really isn't where it needs to be, guess what? You may have to take a step back. We're going to learn about that in this episode. So stick around and learn how to effectively and correctly start your business over again without giving up on your dreams. We're going to do that. And in the moment, but first, we always got to do our famous what? Gong. The show is not official unless we have the gong that starts it, and there we go. All right, Miss Marie, you got anything to say as we get started? Uh, I am excited about this topic because I think it applies to almost everybody, really. It's the rare person that comes into the network marketing industry with any type of previous experience that really allows them to get off on the best start possible and just keep that momentum going right from the beginning. I think a lot of people come in, they get started, they start looking around, they get a little bit overwhelmed and hesitate or mm -hmm. stop for a period of time. But that that dream, that desire for the time freedom, the lifestyle, the income, it's, it's always there. And I know people that have even stepped away from the industry because they didn't get off to a good start. They got stuck and they just thought, well, it's not for me. But that dream, that potential that's there still sticks and they yeah. just can't let it go, so they'll come back. So I think this is a great topic for everybody today. I, I have a feeling a lot of our listeners out there, a lot of our viewers have probably, if they're not in the midst of this, uh, they have experienced and, and can totally appreciate where we're coming from. Right. And very well said, and I agree 100%. That's the reason why we're doing this episode on this subject, guys, <clears throat> because as Marie stated, uh, we really want to focus on the people that are starting out. The reason why we ha had that episode about getting your first check, and we had the episode yesterday. Um, we are focusing in on the people that are starting out because 
once again, Marie and I, with our experience, we immediately defer to the larger picture, but that's not always the way that this is going to work. As she stated, even if you're a person that we call a, a retread, and that's not a negative term, a retread means somebody that came in, as she just stated, and they didn't get off on the right step and their confidence was shaken and they took a step back and they said, you know, I don't want to have anything to do with that because I don't know what I'm doing. And they convince themselves that they can't do the business. And but yet in the side, they're thinking to themselves, you know, I really can do that. But they're scared because they don't have the support. They don't have the guidance. They don't have the help. They don't know what to do. OK. And even though it's a simple business, look, we talk about the five simple steps to us. Those steps are really simple and they are. But you know what? If you're new, they may not seem so simple to you. And if you get off on the wrong step on the five simple steps, it may shake your confidence. We talked yesterday, Miss Marie, about the confidence and everything. Remember? Yep. You know, and, and it's normal to get your confidence shaken, guys. We don't expect you to be a superstar out, out the gate. We don't expect you to have total confidence in what we're teaching right out of the gate. We know that you, some of you are going to be a little shaky. Even if you're a real a star in your current position, whatever it is you're doing, that doesn't mean those skills, those talents, and those abilities will transfer uh, unilaterally and easily to the network marketing business model. For instance, and this is uh, on topic here, I have sponsored people that own their own businesses or were big shots in other industries, and they thought they had the world by the tail. They thought that this business was easy. And I would, when I would meet with them and when they decided to join, I would say, well, your biggest problem is going to be you. And they're like, well, what are you talking about? And they normally don't have people talk to them like this, but it wasn't my goal to be mean. It wasn't my goal uh, to put them on the spot or to make them feel uncomfortable. What's my goal? If I tell them that I know what I'm doing and if I do know what I'm doing and I realize from past experience that they have a lot of barriers that are going to keep them from being successful, what is my job as their partner, as their helper? as their guide, your God, you know what my job is? To be truthful and honest to them. And a lot of people that are in powers, in positions of power don't like the truth. They want people to be yes people and they want people to just make it work, okay? And they don't like it when people speak the truth. So sometimes these people can be very strong, but I'll tell them, I said, your biggest challenge is gonna be you. You know, this is a simple business model, but you, and they'll say, well, why do you say that? And I'll tell them exactly what I just said. I'll say, and with all due respect, as from one human being to another, yes, you've accomplished a lot in the position that you are in at the current uh, time, but what you have, the retail, if they own their own business, the retail mindset that you have, the retail tactics and methods and strategies you use to build your business will not work in the network marketing business model, okay? If they were a, a person of power in a management position, they're used to telling people to go here, go there, do this, do that. And they're not used to doing things themselves, even though they, through their hard work, they got where they are. That's not the point. Their effort to get where they are in a management position is a totally different effort than making this business go. And again, I'd say your biggest obstacle is going to be you. If you're not willing, to take direction, to work together as a team, and to understand that you know nothing about this business model that I do, you're not going to make it. Okay. It's an interesting phenomenon. As we get older and we progress through our career, whatever that happens to be, we like to get to a place where we're comfortable with, we're, with what we're doing. We're actually some sort of an expert. And I think we lose, to a certain extent, for most people at least, we lose the ability to go and be bad at something starting out, right? Mm -hmm. We think because we've achieved a level of success, especially for the super successful people, the, the really strong um, individuals that you wanna bring in to build your business, they've, they've built success, they're at a certain level of lifestyle and income, most likely, they're not used to being in a position of not knowing what to do, of feeling like they're stumbling around and not being the expert. And that creates a huge, huge level of discomfort for those people. Yes, absolutely. <clears throat> well said and a wonderful point. And that's exactly what I was saying in a nutshell, well, I wouldn't say it in a nutshell, I was saying it in a broader way. Um, but the point is, uh, we both made great points about working with people like that, okay? 
So the point is, is that we want you to be able to take a step back and realize, do not give up on your goals. Do not give up on your dreams. Just because you got off on the wrong step doesn't mean that you can't hit that great restart button, gather yourself, and then go again with a new 90-day mini blast approach. Now, you got to realize that the five simple steps are so simple. The biggest challenge you're going to have is mastering the music to their ears message. Look, you have to have a message that's going to resonate with high quality people. We've talked about that. There is no way around that. Okay. It, we already talked about, look, if you don't have the right message, it's not going to resonate with high quality people. If you don't have the right posture, if you don't have the confidence in yourself, when you're talking to somebody that is, a, that is used to achieving a lot in their life and they want out of the rat race and they need to maintain their income level and their lifestyle, they are not going to waste their time with Rob if Rob is cowered down and talking with a low tone and just mumbling a message that makes no sense, has no point to it, has no clear message to it. They're going to say this guy has no confidence. This guy has no idea what he's talking. I can't even understand him. What may he that person is going to walk away saying there's no way that individual successful in anything because they have no confidence. You know, their posture was terrible. Their their uh, presentation was horrible. Guys, that's what we're saying is that out of the five simple things, the one thing you got to master, the one thing you've got to know, and it's got to roll off of your lips is the music to the ears message so that when you are meeting someone like a Marie, she can say, okay, Marie may have some prior experience with network marketing or maybe has a, a lot of knowledge about it. But I'm going to look, is somebody that calls a they've read about it or watch videos about it that believe me they don't know network marketing but the point is they may think they do and the thing is is that marie has to say to herself especially because like look i'm gonna tell you something you could end up sponsoring a big time former business builder the business builders do not go around wearing a shirt i'm a former amway diamond i'm a former black diamond with so okay they don't do that Okay, they may have stepped away from the business because they built a successful business and they've been gone for seven, eight years. I've had this happen. And you know what? When they decide to come back, they're looking for somebody that knows what they're doing. It's not like they don't know what they're doing, but they see value in working with someone that does know what they're doing. And Marie may be a former Black Diamond and she's not saying a word. She likes the company. She's looked at the comp plan. Now she's a, she knows she's got to be sponsored by somebody. Okay. She's heard about Rob in some way, shape, or form, and she wants to meet Rob, okay? And she'll sit there quietly, never mentioning that she was a former Black Diamond with company XYZ. She want, You know why? She wants to see if Rob knows what he's doing. She wants to see how Rob handles himself. And you know what it is? She's not going to walk away saying Rob really knows the network marketing business model. She's going to walk away saying, you know what? He had a clear, concise message. He was to the point. He was professional. He looked me right in, the, right in the eye. He was to the point. You know what? This guy really knows what he's doing. This guy has a lot of confidence. I can work with somebody like this. This is somebody that I'm looking for. Okay? Because it's a two-way interview. you got to realize just because the prospect is there, it's not like the prospect is sitting there waiting for you to make them melt like butter. They're there looking at you and evaluating you and this opportunity as much as you are looking at them. And you have to keep this other point in mind, too. Look, they're meeting you because there's something about the company. There's something about the opportunity. And they already basically know that the network marketing business model provides things. And people are looking for the money, the lifestyle, time, freedom. It's amazing how many people that have even not been a part of the business, they get that, don't they, Mary? They inherently do. Yeah. That's why they look at the business model. They do look at the business model that way. And that and that is the appeal of this industry. Absolutely. Right. Hey, Rob, I, I'm wondering if we can step back a minute here and and I want to pose a question to you because our topic is is talking about restarting your business, hitting that reset button. Yeah. And and I think the big question that's probably out there is, can I do it in the company that I'm currently in and I kind of messed up? Or do I need to find a new company and do a total fresh start? That's a great question. And thank you for that reset. <laughs> but the other point that, that I made was relevant to restarting. Okay. 
and if you go back and listen, you'll see why. But here's what she's saying, and here, there's two answers to this. One, if you're with a company right now and you're using either the five simple steps or use another business building system and you decide to reset utilizing the five simple steps as your new approach uh, and you're with the same company, the answer is yes, but it's, it's hard. And here's why. If you already have a downline, you really have lost them. If you decide to use another business building uh, system because the one you have been using has not been producing, you don't have the right message, you're working your tail end off and you're getting little in return and you are smart enough to say, well, I'm doing the right things. In other words, I'm putting forth the effort. I have the right attitude, blah, 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 but I'm not getting the results and it's got to be because of the system. Okay. Well, you've already indoctrinated your downline with that old system, right, Marie? So the, the choice is this. If you decide to stay with the same company, but utilize a new approach and a new business uh, building system, you're going to have to meet with your people. And you can do that, thank God, with conferencing, video conferencing. You get everybody on, you can say, guys, here's what I'm doing. You got to be honest with them. You got to be to the point, And you got to say, look, I realize now after X amount of time that the system's not working. I'm putting in the effort. I'm following the directions. I'm working my tail end off. I'm getting some success, but I'm not gaining traction. And I really believe it's because the system is not what we need. I am making a change. I'm going to use the five simple steps. Okay. This is a proven system, blah, blah, blah. You tell them why you're using the system, the new system, the new approach. And you tell them, I believe in this company. It's the reason why I'm staying. I'm not going anywhere. I believe in the comp plan. Uh, I believe in the product. So we got a good thing here. We just got to make some adjustments. And as business owners, sometimes you got to make a, a drastic adjustment. And let them know because why they're number one, they're your partners. Number two, it's their businesses. Okay. You're not their boss, but out of courtesy, you're letting them know, Hey guys, this is the, what I'm doing. Got, and you have to keep in mind, and this is the answer. You're not dragging them with you. Your goal is not to drag them to the new business building system with you. You're letting them know out of courtesy. Okay because you're a partner and you made a promise to them that you would help them and guide them when you signed them up. So what is the least you should do? Not an email. You can do a conference call by a phone. You know, there's free conference calls uh, systems that we can get multiple people on free of charge for an hour. I think it is Murray. I think it's limited to 50 people or hundred people, whatever, or you can use zoom Skype and so many other platforms. That's what I would do you can get 30, 40 people on there and everybody can be on the screen. Okay. And you can mute, mute everybody else out and allow you to speak as the presenter and put out your case. Okay. And then just tell everybody, Hey, I'm going to take questions, but please one at a time. Okay. And we only have an hour. We're limited, you know, whatever. Okay. Put a time limit. Don't stay on there forever because they'll keep you on there forever. Lord only knows you'll have one person that'll have 22 questions. OK, before anybody else gets it in there and you can't have that. If somebody else dominates, you will lose your other people. Keep it short and to the point and put a time limit on it before you get on. OK, and if you say 30 minutes and and then you're on a roll with something, you can say, OK, guys, I'm going to stand up for an extra five minutes or 10 minutes, but I got to cut it off. OK, and you got to tell them I got a prior appointment or hey, me and the family are going somewhere. you got to have a solid reason to get off. You cannot drag it out. OK. So that's the point. That's answer number one. If you're with the current company and making a change in the business system, you're going to have to let them know. And then what's going to happen is they either join you or they don't. If they want to say, yes, I, I want to be with you. I like you. I want to work with you. Then you're going to have to have a training session. If you're a part of our members area, we provide the training. You can just tell people, go here. You'll learn everything you need to know. Here's the new approach. That relieves you having to do it. Okay. But even if you want to conduct it, once again, you'll have the materials in your hands, if you will, or in your possession. That's what I was trying to say, where you can do a Zoom meeting, a Skype meeting and train them yourself. OK, and there's your new beginning. That's your new reset. You hit that button and you can say, OK, guys, on September 1st, 2020, we are starting all over. OK, now I'm not saying today's the 11th. Don't do that. Don't wait to the first. I'm just throwing in. <laughs> A date out there. If you do that, you'll lose those people. You, what you would really want to say is, okay, guys, uh, on August 13th, we're going to start. Everybody's starting with the new system because you got to get them time to learn and then time to 
get with you to ask questions. Even if they go in the members area, they may have questions. Marie, what does this mean? I watch everything and I have these questions. So give yourself a little time. Don't say August 12th, which is tomorrow. We're all starting. OK, don't do that. Give them time to ask questions and get clarification, because if you put that extra pressure on them, they get off on a bad uh, start themselves. They're going to have to hit the reset, which slows down your business. Don't do that. You might want to wait. And what do you think, Marie, the 18th? You know, you don't want to wait too long. Uh, they I, always, really. I always like to start things on a Monday. It just feels like that's always a good day well, to start. You, uh, you know, beginning of the week, starting fresh. Let's go on on Monday and maybe announce it. You know, Monday, you Tuesday, Wednesday, the week before. That gives people plenty of time to get reoriented, get through the materials. Uh, oftentimes, if you're working with people who are also have full time jobs and family and those types of things, they need some time over a weekend to be able to get that that learning base in as well. There, there's the answer right there. So if you want to do it on Monday, like Marie, that's awesome, guys. You're the one that's in control. But the thing is, give your people time to go look at the system. If they don't, that's their answer. They're not interested. If they do, you need to have give them time. And you want to tell them that at the end of the Zoom meeting, whatever, and say, all right, guys, whoever goes in and looks in, goes into the members area and looks at the five simple steps and the training in there, downloads the documents. Uh, here's what we're going to do. We're going to wait till next Monday, which would be, uh, let's see, that would be the 17th of August. We're going to wait till next Monday before we start. That gives you guys time to get with me and, and so that if you have questions, we can get those clarified so that everybody's on the same page and everybody can start their visibility activity next Monday, the 17th. You want to make sure you close it out that way so that they know they can ask questions, okay? And that this time frame between today and this, learn the five simple steps, write down their questions, and get with Marie for clarification and, and uh, any help on understanding the system, okay? that That's the way you want to hit the restart in that situation. If, in fact, you have the second question you had, Marie, if in fact you're with this company and you have not sponsored anyone because you got off to such a terrible um, start, guess what? It's easy to make that change and um, use the five simple steps with the same company because you haven't sponsored anybody. So you, you just make sure that the your biggest challenge is going to be mastering the music to the ears message. That's your biggest challenge. So that's what you want to do is you want to make sure that you, before you start your restart, make sure that message flows off of your lips. Does not mean that you're not going to stutter. Does not mean that you're going to miss, uh, replace some words with other words. You're, you're going to have to get good at it by using it. Okay. You can practice all you want, but until you're in that moment and you feel the pressure of delivering that <laughs> correctly, you're still going to make mistakes. That's just part of the growth process. Okay. Even though I walked around, I'd seen it over and over, and I was the originator of it. Even when I got out there and started using it, guys, I still made mistakes. But guess what? Life is about mistakes. And the person, if I'm sitting around um, across the table from Marie, she doesn't know I made a mistake. So I'm not going to beat myself up over it. I'm not, when I get in the car to drive home, I'm not going to go, boom, 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 you goofball. You left out one word. You forgot one word, or you replaced one word. So what? As long as Marie got the message, that's all that mattered. And if she asked me for a follow-up, the message worked, okay? <laughs> so don't worry about it, okay? But what I'm saying, when, you, when I say master it, where it flows off your lips, I'm not saying that you have to have every word identical. You should. That should be your ultimate goal. But don't worry about it. Don't wait to start your business building activity until you get every word right in the message. No, that's not the point of it. The point is that for it to flow off of your lips, okay? And if you use enough of the message, it will have enough keywords in it where Marie will perk up and say, he's speaking my language. I need to listen to this guy. There's something going on here, okay? That's what you want. That's the kind of response you want. So actually, there's three answers here because that's the second uh, scenario. If you're with the uh, same company, but you haven't sponsored anybody and you're going to hit the reset, that's all you got to do. Because the five simple steps, all the rest of it's physical. It's the mouth part. In other words, from your lips to Marie's ears. 
the message. That's what you need to master before you start your reset. Now, the third scenario is you got downline, you're with this company, you realize that the company is not what you thought it was, and now you've got to make a decision, and you're going to hit the reset. What do I do? You can't just leave your downline. Marie just can't get up and take off and leave her downline and find a new company. Okay. I mean, she could, there's nothing that says she can't, but it's very unethical. She made a promise to these people when she sponsored them that she was going to be there to help them and guide them and that they could be successful with this company. What does she need to do? Again, get on Zoom, get on Skype. She gets everybody together who wants to be on there. Okay. She's not going to hold multiple Skype events and multiple Zoom events. Okay. Either her people get on there or they don't. Why? Because she can record some of these and she can give access to that recording uh, to the people that said, hey, I was at work, I was, in, which is going to happen. But you got she's got to be fair with them. She's got to say, hey, look, guys, uh, this company has not turned out to be what I thought. And he did have the five things a company must have uh, in order to do something special, but it's not working out that way. OK, there's there's and you don't go into detail. You don't say, well, uh, Joe Blow stole money from the company or the product has got bad ingredients in it. And we didn't know it when we started. You don't need to do that. What you need to do is just be professional and say, look, this is not the company that we thought it was. I apologize for that. When I investigated it, it had the five things a new company must have to do something special. There's no doubt about that. But as time go has gone along, it's become evident that this company is not going to deliver the results that we want. Okay. And, and, and let's say in this scenario, you are using the five simple steps. Okay. So Marie knows from past experience using the five simple steps, what kind of results she should expect from her effort. And it's not happening. Well, if it's not happening, it's because either the comp plan is not working out the way she thought it was going to, or the product demand is not there, or the company growth is not going, in, it's not gaining traction. So there's no exponential growth for a number of different reasons, or maybe the funding's not there. It could be a combination of all those things. It could be one of those things that's having a major impact. It really doesn't matter. What matters is that Marie caught it. She realizes there needs to be a change. She's getting her people on Skype and Zoom, and she's being honest with them saying, look, I, I, I'm leaving. This company's not what it, what it presented itself to be, or the company is not working out. Guys, we cannot continue to put our effort into this company because it's not going to deliver the results that we all want from this business. And we talked about that when we first met and went through the prospecting process. I have an obligation to let you guys know because I sponsored you guys in this business that I'm going to another company. And you want to let them know I'm not a company jumper. This is not about money. This is not about, this is about being with the right company because guys, as we have been taught, either the numbers are going to work for you or against you. Okay. And it's my job as a professional to let you know that this is not going to work. The, the system is not going to work with this, it's going to work against us. And there's too many dynamics that are going in the opposite direction of us. And we cannot drag this company across the uh, finish line, just like I can't drag Marie across the finish line. And we'll have a, a story about that someday too, Miss Marie. <laughs> okay, I'll write that down. Finish line, <laughs> because we want to make sure that people understand what that means. But the thing is, she has to be honest, and she has to say, "We're not going to drag this company across the finish line. We have to. We're business people. We have to take care of ourselves, and this is not working." So that's the third scenario. And when you hit the reset, Miss Marie is leaving the company altogether. And you're letting your people know that you're leaving. If they choose to stay, that's their prerogative. But you as their sponsor have an of obligation and responsibility to be upfront with them, honest with them, and say, hey, your job is not to get on that conference call, that uh, Zoom meeting, Skype meeting, and knock the company. Okay? That's unprofessional. That's unethical. It doesn't matter. Even if the company has targeted you as an individual, and I'm stretching here they don't do that for, for the most part unless you're doing something bad but the point is is that it's not that's not the point it's not working out it's like dating you can date someone and it, you're just not meshing you know and you say hey you know what let's mutually agree that this is not working <laughs> we need to go in the opposite directions and find the people that we're supposed to be with that's exactly what's going on here 
you're realizing that this relationship, and you got to remember, look, you're a professional business builder. You're not a network marketer. You're a professional business building. You have no obligation to this company. The only reason you joined this company because it presented you with the opportunity to make the type of money where you could live the lifestyle you wanted, okay, or want. So that's the only obligation you have is to yourself and your future, not the company. So there's no reason to stay with the company, even if you love the owners and even if you love the comp land and the product. I've been there, believe me, many times, but you have to make tough decisions sometimes when things are not going to pan out the way that you want. You, look, life is time is too valuable for you to waste your time on the wrong company. Just like we talk about when you're prospecting. If I, if I focus on the wrong person and try to convince that person to join me, I miss out on a Marie. Well, same thing. If I try to make this company work, I'm going to miss out on a real company. It gives me the real chance to do something special. So that's the third situation. Did I make that clear? Did I... Did I do okay to that? Yep. Well, and I think I think it's a big part of the question that hangs out there when you think about hitting that reset button and doing that restart because you didn't get off to the best start. Well, where do we go from there, right? And I, I think the main thing we want to offer here today is um, the hope and the knowledge that even if you didn't get off to the best start, restart. You know, hit that reset button, put a stake in the ground and start from that point and then move forward. You just yes. have to decide which of those three scenarios that Rob just went over that you're going to start from. What's yes. going to work best for you? Use those five simple steps and get off on the right start this time. Right. And then and, and I'm going to uh, chime in with this because there's a couple other scenarios we need to talk about uh, to clarify. Look, guys, if your confidence, if you walked around and you feel that you are confident that you have mastered to the for the most part the music to the ears message that's awesome and then you get out there and you're about to pee in your pants because you're so nervous some people are afraid, some people are afraid to get out there and meet people uh some people when they go through the first couple of one-on-one -on -one meetings with someone uh they're so nervous they stumble through it uh they they really don't have a great posture and when they get in the car to go home after their uh, meetings, their initial few meetings, they're just like, I don't know if I'm right for this business. This, this is so hard, you know, and, and I get so nervous and, and I stutter and I, guys, no, don't, don't give up on yourself. Because you have a lack of confidence, you gotta be patient with yourself. Remember, everybody has a different trip to sit uh, down the path of success. Everybody's different. And then use a, a little bit of a different analogy. I remember like, look, I'm, I'm I love sports. I was very, you put a ball in my hand, I'm a magician. You ask me to get on the dance floor and I'll trip over my own feet. It's amazing how that worked. You would think because I'm so good with sports that I have this agility and this rhythm. No, I don't. Guys, when I first started out in sports, I was horrible. I remember getting cut off of the high school basketball uh, team and I'm, a, I'm embarrassed to look back and reflect on the tryouts because I was so bad. When I went out for softball, I was so bad. I gave up on baseball. I was so bad. Football, I didn't. I struggled in the beginning, but you know what? Here's the thing: I didn't give up, guys. I fought through that. And in each one of those sports, every time I went out somewhere, basketball, same. Well, I said basketball, guys. I got to a point where everybody picked me first or second to be on their team because I was so good at what I did. But I put in hours. I was. I refused. My failure motivated me. I knew that I wanted to be counted among one of the best and I had to pay the price, but I didn't know what that price was going to be. I had to put it there. I remember going out and playing literally in the snow. I would shovel the, uh, the basketball court. It was an outdoor basketball court. I would go out there and be sleeting, raining, snowing. I kid you not. And people would be, I would play, I would practice no kidding 10, 12 hours a day. And that is no joke. And people would look at me and think, well, how crazy is that guy? And I understand. Now, are you going to have to put in 10, 12 hours a day in mastering this? I hope not. But the point is, Miss Marina, I can't look you in the eye and say, you just put in a couple hours, you're going to be okay. We don't know that because we don't know how far you have to go. If you're not a great speaker and you're nervous and you're about to pee in your pants by talking to someone, you, you might have a ways to go to get that comfort level. We can't tell you how long that's going to take. Okay, so confidence could be one thing. You go out there and you start and you go 
and you say after three or four people, three or four meetings, you say to yourself at home, I don't know if I can do this. This is so nerve wracking and I'm so nervous. And yet you pretty much master the message, but it's the delivery of that. It's the fact that you're meeting people, you're not comfortable socially meeting people. There's so many different challenges, Miss Marie, that it's hard for you and I uh, just to focus in on the fact that somebody already has a downline or this or that. We're talking about people that even stick their foot in the water and get scolded, if you will. And then they're, they really have a burn to do the business, but these barriers are there. Guys, don't give up. Only you can fight through those barriers. This is where self-help, listen to Tony Robbins, Jim Rohn, uh, you guys, you've got to do that. Every, all of us have to go through it. Okay. We still listen to self-help. We still do that. Okay. As a leader, you can never stop growing. You can never think you're good enough. Okay. And it doesn't wear you down. I love learning. So listening to that stuff, uh, invigorates me. And I just, when I think I've learned enough, I l realize I haven't. Okay. So Miss Marie, it's, it's more, even if somebody sponsors the first couple of people and like Marie sponsors Rob and somebody else, but Marie is scared to death and she's like, okay, I did it. I sponsored somebody, but yet she forgets the other part, which is training Rob and her new part, other new other partner. Okay. That's a whole new thing. She's like, oh my gosh, what do I do? What do I tell them? Okay. And on top of that, she might think, okay, I, I did that. And she's kind of stopped. She's like, okay, I did it. Folks, you, you really, okay, she sponsored two people. Okay. <laughs> I mean, she's lost the big picture. She doesn't get it. She doesn't understand. Okay. I got on a roll. I got to keep this baby going. Okay. There's all kinds of challenges. So you say to yourself, can I hit the restart button in these scenarios? Absolutely. You can, you can sit back. And even if you have to take two or three weeks, listen to Tony Robbins, Jim Rohn, uh, Dick, um, what's that guy's name? No, Brian Tracy, um, Og Mandino, a lot of great ones. Zig Ziglar. There's so many great ones out there. Guys, if it takes you two to three weeks, it takes you a month, it takes you five weeks to get your confidence up and to realize that everybody goes through this, that is okay. Because you can hit that reset button again and you can say, okay, August 12th, 2020, because today's the 11th, August 12th, 2020, I'm starting my next 90 day mini class. And that's a point I need to make, Miss Marie, and we both do really, is the point is that guys, if you hit the reset button, that resets your first day. Okay. Don't put the pressure that, hey, I went out for a week, 10 days, and I and I I did sponsor two people and I really didn't know what to do with them. And I and I kind of quit after sponsoring two people. And then three or four weeks go by and you think, oh. I already wasted a week of my 90 days. No, no. Start fresh. Let that go. That's in the past. Let it go. Let those two people go because you can't raise the dead. If you leave the chances because they're forever tied to you with their ID number. OK, whether they do anything or not is up to them. OK, I would encourage you to if you only sponsor two people, you can let them know, hey, I'm now taking action. But to be honest with you, I don't know if that's going to do any good after being gone three, four, five weeks. Okay. The point is just hit that complete reset to August 12th will be your first day of your next 90 day mini blast. And maybe you can get off to a better start. So I wanted to bring that up. You know, people that have the lack of confidence, even if you have a life event, you know, Ms. Murray, you know that there's people who get out there and go the first week to 10 days gangbusters and have a life event come up. And they, I've had people in the past, Rob, what do I do? What do you mean? What do you do? Well, I already did 10 days of my 90 day. No, 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 no. Hit that reset button. Come in with a fresh attitude. Come in like you didn't sponsor anybody and get that first day, the first night, the first day of your next 90 day mini blast going on the right step, which would be August 12th, 2020. That'll be your new first day of your 90 day mini blast. Act like you never did anything before. Oh, really? I can do that? Yes. Yes. Let's do that. Let's just let the past be the past. And let's move forward. So I wanted to bring up those scenarios as well as the reset. Uh, do you have anything to add to all that? 
Well, I was going to say, I definitely agree with the self-help stance, um, getting into those types of materials, learning, becoming more comfortable in terms of building your self-confidence. But what I found for myself is that I needed to build my self-confidence by doing it myself and getting some feedback. So I'll share with you two ways that I did that. One was I actually recorded myself doing the music to the years message. Now, wow. Back in the day, it was just an audio recording, but that was yeah. fine because a lot of work was done over the phone, right? Today, you sure. can do video as well until you're comfortable and you can see the recording of yourself. Oh, I stumbled there. Oh, the inflection maybe isn't as good. I need to be a little bit more enthusiastic. And the second way, and this is the only, <laughs> only way after learning the hard way that I employ friends and family in my network marketing business is mm -hmm. to hey, I'm working on my presentation skills. I have this little thing I want to be able to deliver. Would you mind spending a little bit of time with me? Let me share it with you. I'm not looking for you to join the business. I don't want, you know, don't worry about any of that. I'm just looking for your feedback on how the presentation's coming across. And then get the feedback and you get that actual exposure with a live person because that's also totally different than just recording yourself, right? So yeah. being able to get that feedback from a trusted friend or family member can be so, super helpful as well. Yeah, that's a, that's a very good point. You know, I forgot about that. I remember practicing in front of a mirror. Um, yeah, that's a really good point. I forgot all about that. And it is. I like the recording part of it. I, I don't know if I ever did that. I may have and not realized it, but that's a really good idea, too. You know, just practice over and over. I think that's a phenomenal idea. And nowadays you can do it on your phone, on your tablet, on your computer. They had most of them come with a voice recorder. Um, so that, that is awesome. And you can film yourself. Obviously, they have the selfie, uh, the front camera, back camera, whatever you call it, where people do the selfies. And uh, so, yeah, the, you're right. You have in the palm of your hand a great teaching tool and a great uh, confidence builder uh, assistant right there in your hand. So those are really good points. And, um, you know, there's, there's, it doesn't matter what the great reset is about guys. It could be a physical challenge. It could be a marriage early time challenge guys. It could be any reason to do the reset. And when you do the reset, you've got to let the past be the past. If you have a downline, you have an obligation to let them know, um, what you're going to do. Okay. And, uh, so being honest and upfront pays huge dividends. Okay. I'm telling you, and there's going to be some people that aren't going to like your decision. They're going to want to stay with the company and that's fine because it's their business. So don't let them play games with you. Don't let them play emotional blackmail with you. You know what? There are people that will try and do that. Um, I've had people in the past saying, well, you're my sponsor. You're supposed to help me. You're supposed to make me successful. You're supposed to I'm like, oh, no, 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 you ain't pulling that. You know what a sponsor means? A helper and a guider, okay? And helping doesn't mean that I'm doing it for you. It means that if you want to work together as a team, I'll be there. I'll help you with that, okay? And if you need guidance, I can help you with that. But the bottom line is it's your business. It's got your name on it. I have no obligation whatsoever uh, for your success, all right? I will teach you. I'll help you, and I will enjoy that with you. But at the same time, you have to take ownership. <clears throat> so don't let them play emotional blackmail with you uh, if you decide to leave a company because that company is not providing what you need. You got to realize, as we talk all the time, as we say, everything works together. And for all of you on the podcast, I have my fingers intertwined with them. Everything works together, meaning that in order for things to work, you have to work together as a team, your partners. Everybody has been on the same page, but at the same time, the company has to work with you. And that's the reason why sometimes you got to hit the great reset because sometimes you join a company that you think is going to do something special and it just doesn't turn out that way. And you just got to take a step back and realize, okay, we got to hit the reset here because this is not working out. And as a professional, again, that's what you do. I remember when I was investing in real estate and in other things, uh, the thing is, is that there were times where I ended up selling properties because it wasn't working out. Okay. And I had real promise, but it just wasn't working and it was time to get rid of it. And some of those I was really attached to. And there's been some cars that I bought that were just, you know, I don't know, we all know the word lemon, right? 
loved it to death, but man, you talking about cost me an arm and a leg. I was like, okay, this has got to go. Okay. And I'm going to promise you, it's hard for me to get rid of my cars. <laughs> so, <laughs> but sometimes that's what you got to do, right? So it's no different in this. You got to realize, as I said, this is a synergistic environment where everything has to work together. And if something's out of kilter, and especially if it's something that you cannot control, i.e. the company, the comp plan, the product, okay, then you've got to make a decision, okay, and then step back and hit that reset button. And part of hitting the reset can be your downline going with you. You know, out of 20 people, you might have eight to go with you. And that's great. But part of the reset is getting everybody on this, those eight people on the same pace. And, okay, guys, let's all, you know, start. Here's our first day, August uh, 18th, every 2020. We're all going to hit the ground running, okay? Let's all get adjusted. Let's all get our time. Because sometimes that adjustment period can take a little bit. You're talking about, you know, a different product, different comp plan. Uh, everybody's going to have questions about it. Marie's going to be swarmed over with questions about the comp plan, the product, the company, things like that, right? So it's hard to just start out the next day. You can, but it's difficult. Yeah, there's going to be a little bit of a transition there, especially if you're opting to fully change companies as part of your reset too, because you're going to have a little bit of a learning curve as well. New yes. comp plan, new products, new company, um, obviously not as concerned with the products and the company history and all that because you're going to refer people to the website, but you want a certain level of familiarity with it, of course, um, because you're going to do your homework before you join that company, especially now that you know, after listening to us, what to look for in choosing the correct company, right? <laughs> That's right, exactly. <laughs> and, I, and I got a quick a real life story about this to clarify the point. And there's a uh, big time business builder. Uh, his first name's Randy, but it's not Randy Gage. Um, but the point is, is that he left New Skin. And what he did is he built it to $10,000 a month. Okay. And this guy was from Wall Street. Okay. And he was, he was one of the big shots on Wall Street and joined network marketing because he loved the business model and what it brought to the table. And he was very successful. He's an extreme type A personality. He puts everything he's got into anything he does. And uh, so the thing is, is that he joined New Skin, but he joined it. He didn't know at the time, but he joined New Skin where there's a limit. And I've told you guys this before. We're not going to go down the road, but remember, the old companies have this much growth per year. They don't have this much. So there's very little room to create wealth in the type of lifestyle you want. One person out of 100, one person out of 50, whatever the number will end up being, out of that, or maybe two people out of 50, two people out of 100, that is yet to be determined. But the point is, is he went out there, he went gangbusters, he loved the company, loved the comp plan, blah, 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 and the products. But he all of a sudden, he topped off at 10,000 a month. He talked to some professionals and saying, why is it that I'm working my tail end off and I'm not getting the return after I capped out at 10,000 a month? He said, that's not enough to live on, which is right. But the point is, is that he, they told him why, and he goes, you're kidding me. He said, well, if I'd have known that, I wouldn't have joined the company, you know? So he left that company and they taught him what to look for. And you know what he did? He found a company, and I don't know if you've heard of this company, Rexall. I don't know if you've ever heard, you know, Rexall used to be a mom and pop brick and mortar store years ago. Uh, folks, they used to have storefronts, Rexall, R-E-X-A-L-L, -L, if I'm not mistaken. And it was uh, nutrition, right? It, yep. was, it was basically in nutrition and medicine, if I'm not mistaken. And they dropped the medicine part because you can't do that in network marketing. And so they focused on uh, the nutritional side. And one of the products they had uh, lowered cholesterol. But it was a safe, proven product, been around for a long time, didn't need to be medically uh, monitored. And so the company had that, and it, they had success story after success story in helping people lower their cholesterol. Well, his bells went off, ding, ding, ding. I got a product that works, got a product that people want, okay? He saw that people were ordering this month after month after month because it worked. He didn't have to do any convincing because it sold itself, okay? And he said, I can tap into this company. It, and when he went to this company, it was a year old, Marie, at that time. He had gone into the network marketing business model. Guys, he came in when it was a year old. 
he skyrocketed up the uh, income ladder because he focused, he was, he was a business builder. He focused on the opportunity. It was a year old company. He realized he had a hot company. He had everything it needed. And more importantly, he realized the main product that he was endorsing. In other words, Hey, you need this, this uh, cholesterol reducing, because he figured that most people were going to need their cholesterol lowered. Okay. And so he had a proven product that he could, depend on that people were going to order month after month after month. Well, and what did that do? That helped him get to the threshold of profitability. Okay. And he could add peripheral products around that because people believed in the, the uh, power of the cholesterol medicine. Okay. Or product. He built a huge business over the next couple of years. And he, that was his, where he cut his teeth and he realized what it took to make this business go. Now that I tell you that story, because if you make a change in a company and you find a company has the five things a company must have, you can use that kind of a story as a barometer in your head when you're looking for that company and you can take your people with you or down the line with you and feel confident that you have tapped into a company that you can sink your teeth into. And so, that, I mean, that's what he did, Miss Marie. He left. And took his downline, that was the essence of the story, his downline from New Skin with him. And because he, he found this other company and, he, and they all took off like gangbusters and quickly shot up. So guys, it can be done. You can hit the great reset. And there's a prime example right there. But see, he was honest with his downline. Not everybody went with him. Okay. But he knew that there were people like him in his downline that said, hey, 10000 a month is not enough money for the work that we're going to put in. You know, guys, you think that's a great uh, income, and it is. But he realized that that income was going to start going down because he was going to sponsor high-quality people that are going to say, this is not enough money. So even if he convinced himself to stay for 10000 a month, he was going to sponsor people that are going to say, no, this ain't going to work. So what he's going to have to do, he's going to constantly be in a recruiting mode, replacing what? The people that left, looking for greener pastures. They wanted a bigger paycheck for their time and effort. And he realized that that's what a professional business builder does. Okay. So I wanted to show the real life example of a great reset. That's what he did, Miss Marie. He wasn't a company jumper. He just saw that hey, it was not work. It wasn't that the company was bad. It wasn't that the uh, new, you know, new skin was a bad company. The products were bad to the comp plan. It was that it was tapped out. So that required a great reset. Okay. And so he told his downline what he was going to do. And then and you know what they told him? Randy, let us know. We trust you. Let us know what you find. And that's what he did. He kept them abreast. He didn't make a jump right away. And he investigated and investigated. He asked his mentors, hey, wh what about this? What about that? What about this company? What about that? And he learned from those people what to look for in a company. Okay. And that's how he became a professional business builder. He realized what this was really about, but he hit that great reset button. So that's a, once again, I just wanted to use that as a real life example of how it can be done. It does work and it can be successful. Yeah, I think that's a, a great um, story to kind of summarize what we're talking about here in terms of, hey, if you're not happy with where you are, hit that reset, restart your 90 day mini blast, just mm -hmm. start from scratch, take the consistent, correct action. And that's the key right there, though. You have to take action and move forward in a consistent and correct fashion in order to build your business. It can be done. Absolutely. And don't be afraid of the word reset. It does not mean you're a failure. That's not what we're saying. We've all had to do it. Golly, I had to restart a number of times. I, guys, it's just, it's just part of the process. But once again, as you can tell, we're focusing on the new people or, or newer people or the retreads with these recent shows because once again, Marie have, and I have a tendency to look at the big picture and we sometimes we forget about the people that are starting out and we just assume that you're going to have the confidence in yourself and in the business model we, and, and we assume other things. And that's just not right. We need to address these issues so that you guys know what kind of challenges you may have and how to overcome those. And don't beat yourself emo emo uh, up emotionally over it. Uh, you're not a failure in any way, shape or form. 
you are actually, believe it or not, on the success path. You just got to realize, just like a plane taking off, uh, a plane uses uh, a lot of, I forget what it is, how much energy and fuel to get off the ground because it's fighting against the wind and all you know, gravity and everything else and the weight of the plane. And uh, it's got a lot of challenges to get off the ground, but it doesn't give up. We all know, this, of course, the story it finally levels off and kind of cruises. Because I don't know if you know, without, I'm not dragging it, a pilot, once they get to the cruising speed, 32,000, 38,000, whatever, they, they pull back on the uh, engines. And because uh, if they can maintain that speed, they'd run out of gas. They know exactly how much gas they have in there. They know it's topped off. They know what speed they need to go in order to have enough fuel. And they also have fuel in reserve in case there's an emergency where they can't land at the their predetermined time. So they have all that figured out. The point is, is that they're in the cruise mode. They're pulling back. Well, that's exactly what you're going through here. You're on the success path. You're having some challenges. You may second guess yourself. You may even second guess the business building system, the company, et cetera, et cetera. Don't hit the reset and realize you are on the success path. You're just going to have some challenges getting off the ground. And if you're willing to work through it, you'll be amazed that you'll get into a cruise mode. And I'm telling you, it is a great life to have. Imagine the stress being gone. You're never going to get rid of all stress. But imagine that you don't have to go to work every day. You can wake up with a smile on your face. You can wake up saying, what am I going to do today? You can wake up spending your time with your loved ones all day. You can go wherever you want. You can pretty much buy whatever you want. That is a wonderful feeling, knowing that you have money in the bank in case anything comes up. You don't have to buy, buy things, but if something serious comes up, you've got the money not only to help yourself but others without hurting yourself. Those are all wonderful attributes of this business model, and it's also a great life to live. That is at your fingertips, and you, if you have to hit the reset button two or three times, that's okay. I've hit it more than uh, two times, I promise you. <laughs> probably in the teens. <laughs> yeah, I was going to say for every company I've ever been with, that was a reset and there may have been a Absolutely. reset within the company even, right? Absolutely. Yes. Absolutely. Yeah. So, I mean, go ahead. I, I was, I was just going to say, the, so, you know, help us help you. If yeah. you, if you like what you're hearing here, if it's making sense to you, like, comment, share, um, share this with your downline, with your team. And of course, give us feedback. Let us know what it is we can help you with. If there is a topic or a subject or a question that you have, uh, we may very well turn it into a future podcast. We Absolutely. want to be able to serve you and help you become successful in this industry. Yes. And as we close, um, also, I want to let you know tomorrow's episode, Miss Marie, we're going to be talking about patience. And you'd be like, well, patience, what's that got to do with success in this business model? You will find out tomorrow, patience is a big part. And it doesn't mean slow down. It doesn't mean wait. That's not what I'm saying. You don't want to miss this episode. And once again, it, it's not just for beginners, although we're going to focus tomorrow on the beginners, the newbies, the retreads, but it does apply to the veterans as well. Believe me, and you'll see why. When we talk about it tomorrow, you don't want to miss that episode because it is going to be a good one. As always, guys, you're learning things that you will not learn anyplace else without any doubt. Miss Marie, wouldn't you agree? Absolutely. And I can't wait for tomorrow. I guess I'm going to have to exercise a little patience till we get there. <laughs> well, that's a good one. Boy, she just plugged that right in there. <laughs> If you will, Miss Marie. Yep. So again, if you will please share, like, and comment on our various social media platforms, if it's making sense to you, again, share it with your team, share it with your downline. Our goal is to help you become more successful and you become successful by helping your partners become successful. Also subscribe to our YouTube channel. You can go there and of course, click that little bell to make sure you register for the notifications. So you'll get that information sent right to you when we're going live or when we have new material available if you're unable to join us live. So give us a thumbs up. Let us know that everything's making sense. We appreciate each and every one of you and we look forward to uh, seeing you again. Same bat time, same bat channel. Yeah. <laughs>
<laughs> that's right. That's right. <laughs> and if you will, guys, go to the website. A lot of additional great information, the MLMSolution.net, the MLMSolution.net. And uh, also, if you want to look for us on any of the social media platforms, you can do so by using the hashtag MLM Solution, hashtag the MLM Solution. I said it backwards. Once again, for all of you on the podcast, hashtag the MLM Solution. And for all of you that are asking questions about when we're going to open up the members area, we will let you guys know soon. It won't be long. It won't be later. It'll be sooner rather than later. Uh, We have a game plan. And uh, we got to stick to our game plan, and there's a reason for it. And uh, just be patient. It's going to be uh, worth the wait. So <clears throat> I appreciate you guys inquiring about it. Uh, <clears throat> but uh, it's not our focus at this particular moment. Uh, we have a lot of information there at the website that will continue to help you, uh, regardless of what your challenge may be. If you go to the website, you'll see a lot of great information that addresses every subject matter you can imagine. And uh, once again, you have the podcast in addition to what's on the website and the video. So to be honest with you, there's a wealth of information, uh, even without the uh, business building. I mean, excuse me, the the members area being open. Miss Marie, I know why people are asking because they want access to the business building system. And I truly understand that. But it's, they're just going to have to wait a little bit. And uh, we will keep everybody abreast, I promise you. So with that being said, we're going to close out. You got any closing comments yet? I do not. Just have to exercise some patience on the members area as well. <laughs> you did it yeah. again. Thumbs up. There's thumbs up. <laughs> we'll Way see you here tomorrow morning, 11 a.m. Eastern time, and we'll be talking about patience. <laughs> Great close. All right, guys. God bless. We'll see you tomorrow, 11 a.m. Thank you for listening to the MLM Solution Podcast. For more info, visit our website, themlmsolution.net. Please follow us on the following platforms, Facebook, YouTube, etc. And share this podcast with our fellow network marketers around the world by hitting the share button on our various platforms.